Hi guys, welcome to Penny's Faith Foundation Youth Service. We really appreciate you joining us on this journey. Judah and I are still on our way out towards Boston and uh, we really hope that you've had a restful half term and that you're ready for the half term ahead. Uh, today's beautiful discipline is submission. What's your view of submission? If you're into wrestling, then it will probably be quite a familiar term because you've seen lots of people kind of tap out and give up when someone bigger and stronger has beaten them. Perhaps you've had a puppy and you've seen the way that your puppy responds to a bigger dog. We used to have a lovely dog called Trinity and when she was a puppy, she met our bigger golden retriever Izzy. And at first she was terrified and so she'd roll over on her back. But then she began to realize this dog that was much bigger than her was actually capable of such love and affection that the submission became um, an act of almost adoration. I don't have any issue submitting to God. There have been many times in my life where I've made terrible mistakes and God has been there to help me and lift me back on my feet. When I was at university, I went on a bike ride in the dark. Uh, I had a helmet, but I didn't wear any lights on my bike. And so definitely recommend you uh, do always ride with uh, bike lights. And uh, I went with a friend and he was a lot more sensible. He had bike lights on his bike and he was riding just behind me as we were going through this park. It was a familiar park. We knew where the path was leading. But I remember at one point looking into the darkness and then within a split second, I was staring up at the stars. I had no idea what had just happened, but my friend did because he saw me riding down this path, flip over a park bench that someone had dragged out into the middle of the park. Now, I was fortunate because I completely submitted myself to God because I had no control over the situation. I was completely fine. My friend tried to take matters into his own hands and unfortunately he broke his arm when he hit the park bench because he tried to, to stop himself. Now, I think this is an example of submission because at the end of the day, we know that God is so much bigger than we are. And so he is capable of looking after us if we submit our lives to him. So today's question is, how could your life look different if you were willing to submit it to God? And we're going to use a song called Servant King to help us reflect on the choice that Jesus made in submitting his life to God and also submitting his life to us. So let's uh, listen to this song from the church worship band to prepare our hearts for this message of submission that God wants to share with us today. Thanks again for joining us. God bless you.
Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 2 and 21. Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about submission. Is this what submission really means? I'm thirsty, go and make me a cup of tea. Yes dear. I'm hungry, when are you going to do dinner? Whenever you want it. I'm going to work, clean my shoes. Yes dear. I've run out of socks, washing needs doing. Yes dear, I'll get on and do it. Is this what submission is really about? Is God a harsh taskmaster? No, he's not. Not at all. Um, I'd just like to read a story from um, the Beautiful Disciplines book by Martin Saunders. Lisa was 27 years old when she made the decision to leave her well-paid job in business to work for a missionary organisation. She believed that God was calling her to work for Operation Mobilisation, a charity that sells former ocean liners to deprived parts of the world to offer medical help, Christian teaching and other services. She was posted to the Doulos, one of the organisation's mercy ships, and quickly given her first assignment on board in the kitchen. It was quite a leap from the trendy corporate lifestyle that Lisa was used to and she had previously been making important decisions on behalf of major clients and now she was peeling potatoes to be served to the ship's lowly guests. There was an even bigger shock. Her boss in this new role was an 18-year-old girl, one who had never had a job before and clearly didn't know what she was doing. Lisa had a decision to make. Should she overrule this poor, confused girl and take over, knowing that her general level of capability was much higher, or should she somehow submit to the authority this girl had been given? She searched her soul and realised that if she truly believed that God had put her on that ship, he must also have put the girl there. She spotted the opportunity to develop the heart of a servant and that meant submitting to the leader who had been placed over her, regardless of how young and apparently unready she might be. Over the next few months, Lisa did exactly that and as she did, an amazing thing happened. The awkward young girl slowly developed into a true leader with the help of Lisa and others she saw her gifts flourish and her skill set grow. Before the year was over, she had matured and developed more than anyone had thought possible. Lisa now holds an important leadership position, as she knows that she learned how to be a leader, however, by learning first how to become a servant. In this story, Lisa shows us a real-world example of true submission. It's important to notice that Lisa chose to be submissive and that as Christians we too should choose to be submissive to God and each other. In the Gospels, Jesus gives us a wonderful example of a life submitted to God and others. There are many stories in the Gospels to illustrate this, such as Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, which is found in John's Gospel. This was a menial task normally performed by a servant and certainly not by the king. Here Jesus was showing the disciples that they weren't to lord it over each other, following the example of the world, but instead were to serve each other, always putting the needs of others before their own needs. However, Does this mean that we should always submit to every request made of us? We have our own moral principles and also the guidelines that God gave us in his word. For example, 
If you are with friends in a shop and they pressurise you to steal something, do you submit because of the desire to be accepted by them? Or do you submit to God's guide which tells us not to steal? Our guiding principle is that if we love God, we will want always to please him first and foremost. And this can take real courage in many different situations as we go against the will of those around us. Submitting to authority can also cause conflict if you firmly believe it's in opposition to God's will. There are many stories of people during the war who hid and rescued Jews and thus putting their own lives at risk. But they firmly believed that saving their friends and neighbours was more important than obeying the authorities. Of course, the ultimate example is Jesus' submission to death on a cross. Let's now read Ephesians 5, 1-2 in the Message Version. Watch what God does, and then you do it. Like children who learn proper behaviour from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. We should choose to submit out of reverence for our loving Heavenly Father because he first loved us. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to enable us to live life in all its fullness. God does not make unreasonable demands on us, but longs for us to follow the example of Jesus out of his love for us. He made and he knows the best paths for each one of us. And if we willingly submit to God's will and plan for our lives, we know he will show us the right way to go. We can therefore be confident that God is not a harsh taskmaster. Sometimes we may get this wrong, but if we genuinely regret our mistakes, we know that God will always forgive us. Our aim is therefore to love God above all things and to do his will. In the light of what God's word says in Ephesians 5 verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, let us revisit the opening scene. I'm thirsty dear, would you like a cup of tea? Oh that's nice, the kettle's just boiled actually. I'm hungry. Can I help you with the dinner? Oh, that would be nice. Um, my shoes need cleaning for work. How about yours? Can I do them also? Oh, yes, I've got a pair by the back door. Um, I've run out of socks, so I'll go and get the washing done. Oh, thank you very much. That is a much better way of doing things than trying to order people around. So let's, in the coming weeks, try and encourage each other to submit to God's will and others. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, it's Henry. I hope you're all doing fabulously. And today I'm bringing you a short message on submission and what submission can look like. And recently for me, what submission has looked like is submitting my, my whole situation with moving away and starting a new job, submitting that to God and giving him the room to do what he wants with that, you know, to him, him to take the reins, to take the wheel, if you will, and just putting my trust in him, submitting that situation to God, putting what he wants before what I want. And that can be scary sometimes because especially with this situation, I was worried about being lonely in lockdown. I was worried if I don't get to meet people or would people like me down there. There was a few things on my mind. So it can be scary when we want to submit something to God, but God has our best intentions at heart 
at, at, at the very heart of it, he's looking out for us because he is a loving God. He loves you and he loves what is you're going through. And he wants to bring you out to greener pastures and to see you come out of that the most effective way, efficient way possible. Because we have got a God who loves us so deeply. And sometimes we think we can know the best route, but actually it's really God who knows the best route. We have got a very narrow perspective of what we can see, but God sees things from all angles. I suppose it's a bit like when we're driving and the sat-nav is on. Now the sat-nav has got the driver's best intentions at heart. It wants to get the driver to his destination or her destination as quickly as possible, as, as efficiently as possible. Now, if you're going somewhere you know, you might think, ah, I don't need to listen to the sat-nav, I know the route. And you might pull up to the junction and the sat-nav might say, turn right. But you, you look ahead and you see a clear road and you think, I know the route, I'm going to go straight ahead. And a little bit later on, sooner or later, you go around a bend and you're stuck in traffic. From our narrow perspective, we only see a few things and we don't see the, the traffic around the bend. But the sat-nav can read the traffic because it gets all this data from here, there, everywhere. The sat-nav is smart. It sees things from a different perspective. The sat-nav realises the best route, but we have to submit ourselves to the, to the, the route the sat-nav is trying to take us. We have to submit ourselves to the route God is trying to take us. We need to give him that room. He can guide us. He can direct us to where we want to go. He might say, turn right. And we may want to go straight on, but ultimately at the, at the end of the day, we are the driver. We need to submit ourselves to what the sat now says, what God says, because God, he has, got his, he has got your best intentions at heart because he loves you so deeply. He wants to see you come out of things, like I said, to greener pastures in the very best way possible. That love is so powerful that he wants to see you come out of whatever it is you're going through. So I strongly encourage you, whatever it is you're going through, whether that be a big thing, a little thing, a worrying thing, just, you know, your day-to-day -day life, submit it to God. Let him take the, let him take the wheel, if you will. Um, you know, give him the, the room to make those decisions. It's a huge step in faith and it can be scary, but let me promise you, from my own experience, it works wonders. God bless you guys. Hi, yeah. Some of you might have heard the uh, children's song, Our God is a Great Big God. And the lyrics say, Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. And we want to say thank you today to God for holding us in his hands for looking after us that our god who's the creator of the whole wide world has got us in his hands so caleb is going to say a prayer uh, thank you god for holding us in his hands amen amen thank you god for being big so we could live in your world amen amen, amen. Dear God, thank you that you are our creator, God. Thank you that you hold us in your hands and that no matter what we do or how we feel, you have got us in your hands and you have got the whole world in your hands. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye. Thanks again for joining us today and thank you to everyone who's been involved in putting this youth service together. Uh, we pray that during your week ahead, God will continue to reveal more and more of his blessing to you as you submit more of your life to him. Perhaps you could use the period of Lent to recommit yourself to him, to, to spend time in prayer, worship, reading his word, and just adoring this incredible God who has made the universe and made you and chooses to submit his life so that we can be blessed so please stay in touch with us during the weeks ahead the uh, zoom discipleship groups will be running again uh, this week the times will come up on the next uh, screen and we look forward to opening up pennies as soon as we can do so that we can see you face to face again thanks again for joining us have a great week 
God bless you. Bye.